So the next thing we have to do is to put in the sort of wardrobe unit itself. Now, if we just flick over to the finished one, I'm not a carpenter, but I would guess that something like this would be made by mitering these corners and then sort of having this sort of supporting this bit there and up here we'd have a mitre corner there and you might even recess a bit into that and then have this as a piece going along supported on these things and this is again some sort of spacer this is a design um, the reason you would do it in individual pieces is because if you wanted to get a cut list out of the cut list plugin which I'll be demonstrating uh, later then making individual pieces would actually give you uh, a realistic sort of output. If I just made this by creating sort of this shape and then extruding it back, I wouldn't get that um, proper cut list option. So what we're going to do is, this is 265 high, I think, or it will be when I've finished with it, and it's 40 mil wide. Okay, so I'm just going to build these things. There's three sections, one, two, three, and we've got a backboard there, and then this panelling behind this sort of MDF... Um, it's MDF uh, tongue and groove board, and there's, I think, one or two or possibly three bits going into that. So what I'm going to do is put in a couple of guidelines to start me off. So click on the back wall, 265 for the height, 265, enter, and then I'll come in from the side wall, 40. And that's going to give me my sort of start of a 10. And then I'll create a rectangle from this corner to that one. So that's the size that I want. Now this is going to be mitered down at this point and mitered up at this point. We'll do that in a minute. Um, what I'm going to do now is double click that to select it and right click and we'll make this into a component and I'll call this um, end. Okay, just something simple and create. And then I can double click to edit and push pull this out to this front face there. And then with my line tool, now it's not going to pick up that, so I need to put in a 40 mil at that point and 40 mil at this point, just so I can put in my mitres. So to that intersection point, to this intersection point. Then P for push pull, take that back to that face and double click this one. So that's created that piece. That's one end piece. I can then copy this and flip it along the now it's you get a different option with um, a single object. If it's a component, then the component has a axis in its um, creation. So if I double click inside that I'll see that the component axis is there's the red, there's the blue, and the green's coming out or going out that way. So I want to flip this along the components red. So right click, flip along components red, that's going to send it in the other direction, and then just track along and bang that into that wall there. So that's the first bit that I've created. The next bit is going to be creating something that is going to form the top and the bottom. So again, if I go from there down to there, that will be my 40 mil. Double click, right click, make component, call this top. Correct. Now I'm going to double click to edit, and this time I'm going to use the move tool. And I'm not going to select anything, I'm just going to click on that sort of node and then drag that bit out. And that's going to basically take it from there out to this point, so that forms a nice... So mitre that side, and similarly this side, click and drag to that point, and then I can peep a push pull, and if I double click, it's going to come down the same distance as the previous one. Okay, and then double click this to find out what the component axis is again. So blue axis is where I want to flip it, that's the vertical one, and select. I'll move it up, copy it up, and then right click and flip along blue axis, and then just drop it down into position. So that's kind of my base box sorted. And I'll just sort of select some of these grid lines. Now you notice that this line or one of these lines possibly 
is embedded in this component. So because I've selected it, it's highlighted there. So it's not that. It's not that. It doesn't seem to be that one either. This one. This one. So these are embedded in the component. If I, and obviously because it's flipped it, this one's attached to the other one. So this often happens. Um, sometimes you create a grid line or a guideline inside a component and it's embedded in there. So double click to edit the component and then just select this one, delete. So just be careful about those grid lines getting embedded into the various elements. Um, the final thing is to create some partitions. So the easiest way to do that is to create a rectangle. We'll do it to there. And I'll just drag it down from that. So I've selected that bottom edge and then I can double click that and right click and make component. I'll call it lower infill, create. Now I know it's not going to end up there, but I'm going to move this or copy it all the way over to the other side, like so, and then do a forward slash three, enter, and that's going to create a division based on this. And I can select that and delete it, select that and delete it. And then obviously these need to be a bit lower, so I should have thought about that first, but never mind. So I'll just double click to edit because of the same thing. I can just bring this, select that top edge, and then move that down to there, select the bottom edge, move that up to there. What I'll also do, because if I push pull through, it might cause, oh no, it's okay. So I'll just push pull those through, and that's created that bit. What I do want to find out is just whether there's a, a, a solid piece at the end of that. If I right click and enter the info, it will tell me whether it's a solid object, solid component, yeah. So I know that that backside's filled. I don't know whether that would affect the cut list or not, but um, just to be safe than sorry. So that's created the base section. We're going to do a similar thing on the top section. There's also a, um, a piece of board on top of this. Uh, we need to move this stuff as well to the MDF layer. So entity info, skirting, go to MDF. Now the MDF is this gray color. So this hasn't updated the color. And that's because, as I mentioned before, all the stuff that's inside it is on skirting. So I need to change that to MDF as well. So it seems to have a different property inside of the component. Okay, so just make sure that you've got MDF selected so it doesn't happen for the rest of the stuff. Uh, we've got a base piece to go in, so let's just look at this. This comes out and it sort of steps around a little bit there and it's got a rounded edge. So we've got 503 plus a rounding so well that'll do for the moment 503 plus a little rounding and that rounding so just comes around the corner as well so I'll just show you how to do that steps out just a little bit based on the um, plans that I got probably about 12 mil thick as well so 503 and a um, little extension at the back there so make sure we're on MDF Let's just put our rectangle tool to use and come in and take it to there and then push pull this and we'll go 12 enter. So that just comes to this point obviously and then we'll push pull this bit out I know, about 10, 15 mil so I'll go 15 and then we'll put a little line in here and do the same push pull out for there 15. So what we've got to do now is create a little sort of rounded arc. We could use the pie or using the arc I prefer the arc tool. So click, click, then come out to it says half circle. That forms a little closed piece there. Then I'll pick this line and this line and use the follow me tool 
I can click on that bit and that's going to whiz around that path. Okay, so then I can triple click, right click, make component, and we can call it um, base top or something and create that. I say when we come back, we will put the rest of it together, but it's basically um, another version of this with a, an extra piece in the middle. Um, but again, nothing too tricky at all. And it's all coming together quite nicely.